Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the Carson campaign accuses Cruz of playing a dirty trick. Then, you'll be shocked by what a school forced a child to do. And college kids feel the burn. That's next. He lived in freedom so long, you're defecating all over what your forebears gave you. But what about Sanders? Such a creep, such a weasel. He knows it's a fraud. He knows the ultra-rich love socialism because they're exempt from an offshore. To see tens of thousands out for him and all the frothing idiots that follow him, it's, just, it's very despicable. He's kind of like an old Che Guevara t-shirt, isn't he? I mean, <laughs> I call him Bernie Sandernista because we, we had these videos that were released showing him going back in the 1980s, talking to the Nicaraguan Sandinistas, talking about how wonderful they were. survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install, and now, as part of an exclusive limited-time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited-time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, it's one day following the Iowa caucuses, a curious slice of American politics. Of course, there were some surprises, and as always with any election cycle, there are already cries of foul play. Now, first comes from the Carson camp. Uh, they've accused the Cruz camp of foul play in the Iowa caucuses. They claim that Cruz's team spread false rumors at caucus sites, saying that Carson had dropped out. Uh, Carson's team claimed that the Cruz camp deliberately sent emails to supporters spreading false rumors at caucus sites. They say they were telling his supporters to caucus for other candidates because Carson wasn't planning on showing up. Now today, Ted Cruz has apologized for his campaign's role um, in swaying voters by any chance. And he said yesterday when CNN reported and put up a post that Carson was going to be continuing on to New Hampshire and not not going to Iowa, going to continue on to South Carolina. Instead, he was going to be flying home to Florida for some fresh clothes. The political team forwarded that to everyone that was on their email, uh, and they failed to forward out a clarifying statement from Carson's camp that said, you know, we're going to be, we're sticking in the race, we're just not going to be here. He had to go home to Florida. So they are saying that deliberately, um, Cruz deliberately tried to sway voters in that way. Who knows? You know, everyone says they don't trust Ted Cruz, but apparently they're going to vote for him. So here we go once again. Now, Trump, of course, he came in second, which was surprising to a lot of people, um, probably even Trump himself, who promised big wins this election cycle. But he says he's honored with this second place finish and he vows he'll win the nomination and whoever the hell the Dems nominate. Trump said, I was told by everybody, do not go to Iowa. You could never finish even in the top 10. But I said, I have to do it. I have to go. And he said, you know, we have a poll. We're 28 points ahead. I'm okay with that. Now, of course, 
the the media today has come out saying that Trump is done, the mystique is gone, Trump's bubble has burst. But the mystique that you know, the mystique that isn't there, what is crystal clear is the establishment's push for Rubio. Now Richard Reeves was there in Iowa. He alluded to this fact. He said every single station you turned on, every radio station, everyone you just kept hearing it over and over again, this Rubio surge. And of course, we saw that there uh, as the numbers were coming in last night. Now the Washington Post, um, Kurt Nimmo points all of this out in his article, how the establishment has been pushing for Rubio. The Washington Post hailed the junior senator from Florida for being the Trump slayer, and they declared the Iowa results put Rubio in a strong position to break away from the crowded establishment pack and claim the mantle of alternative to Cruz and Trump. Hello, Rubio is the establishment. He's got huge establishment donors to his campaign. He's like the clear choice. It's either him or Cruz. And then, of course, he, Nimmo points out how Fox News has been relentlessly pushing for Rubio. They said it doesn't matter how much Trump or Cruz lead. What's more important is to take note of how well Rubio did on Monday evening. And they say it's his turn now. Um, also, we have another emailed statement saying that this could be the first sign that the Trump bubble is about to burst. The betting is now firmly pointing toward a Clinton-Rubio showdown in November. So, of course, all of this it comes as no surprise because it's perfectly timed with several of those top establishment wonks putting out the call to take out Trump no matter what. Now, of course, Trump supporters think that Microsoft had a helping hand uh, in Rubio cheating Iowa, as a lot of people are saying in uh, there's a hashtag Microsoft Rubio fraud trending on Twitter. Um, because, you know, he was trailing far behind, but then all of a sudden, Microsoft is Rubio's number two campaign contributor, also create this app for all the caucuses to use. Um, so one of the memes asks, nice of them to count the votes, wasn't it? But also, speaking of curiously lucky, is probably one of the most luckiest women in the, in the universe, Hillary Clinton. She beat Bernie Sanders six times because of a coin toss. So this was in at least six different precincts across Iowa Monday night. The Democratic caucuses, their votes ended in a tie. So they'll decide who gets a delegate by a coin toss. And of course, we saw all of this. She won all of these. And she secured an incredibly narrow lead. I think it was like 0.3%. And um, how likely is it to win a coin toss six times in a row? Well, it's around a chance of 1.6%. So here's Alex Jones earlier today giving his take on whether it's time for all of us to put on our tinfoil hats. I want to do this on air for TV viewers. I will narrate it, describe it for radio listeners across the United States and the world. One of the clear evidences of fraud last night is that Hillary was going to lose if she didn't get the six coin tosses in a row. It was supposed to go to Sanders, but she magically got the six coin tosses for the disputed delegate because they were in a dead heat. She won by 0.2%. And, and then, of course, the craziness just continued from there where she'd have ballots already counted for her, and they would double count them right in front of people. And then they wouldn't put that in the app because it had already been tallied, so it would show it as fraudulent, so they, quote, called it in. It's all on video. It's all on Infowars.com. And, and even mainstream media covers it and goes, wow, this is kind of weird. Let's just move along. Here we go. So let's say six heads and Hillary in a row, she gets... That disputed delegate that if she wouldn't have gotten it, she would have lost to Bernie Sanders. Here we go. Oh, heads. She got it. First one. Let me show folks. Heads. Let's document Cam. There you go. So she just won the first toss. Here, let's 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 mark that right here. That's one for Hillary. And she is a lucky lady, huh? Let's let's do the second one here. Hey, lucky lady, she did it again. Oh, whoa. She got tails on number three. What do you know? What do you know? Go out of six. Heads. This is tails. So we got one there. Let's keep tallying here. Let's do it again. Oh, tails again right there. So that's head to head. Two heads, two tails tied. And we got 
We got two more towing costs. In fact, this will be deciding, but I guess if she didn't get all six, it went into more towing costs. Up oh, tails again. Sorry, Hillary. Sorry, sweetie. Now, if you don't get this one, it's totally tied. She'll lose. But remember, she just got all six in a row, so there was, there was never any doubt. Oh, tells again. Sorry, Hillary. Sorry, you don't get the delegate. Bernie Sanders does. But see, that's in the real world. That's in the real world. Here, let's just keep flipping. Oh, she got heads that time. Here, let's just keep flipping. See, in the real world, there's chance. Heads again. In the real world, that's... Oh, tails. See, in the real world, it's 50-50. But see, not in Hillary Clinton world. Oh, tails again. Not in Hillary Clinton world. So just to illustrate how ridiculous it would be to have six in a row and then all this other hanky-panky and the app fails magically so that you don't have the regular tallying system and it just goes into some black hole and phone calls are made and then we learn who won. Now, I've already pointed out how the establishment has been pushing for Rubio, but let's look at how the mainstream media is also picking another candidate, Hillary Clinton. So earlier, uh, Sarah Palin went on the Today Show and they sandbagged her. They gave her some uh, curveball question about her kid. Well, during a four minute appearance on the Today Show, the former Secretary of State was not asked a single question about the disturbing new revelations that came out prior to her going on the show, where it said classified emails put lives at risk. They asked her questions like, oh, did you wake up this morning excited? And how come you won't just come right out and say that Bernie Sanders can win? So, and then this article, this is uh, from Breitbart, but they go on to just point out all of the ways that MSNBC has been stumping for Hillary. And, you know, you've got to read this because it just, it just shows how good it must be to be Hillary. Now, Jakari Jackson took to the streets to ask Austinites who's their favorite candidate. Last night, we saw the results of the Iowa caucus where Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and Marco Rubio came in first, second, and third, respectively. On the Democratic side, we saw Mrs. Clinton have a very narrow, and many people say debated, victory over Bernie Sanders. So we're here at the University of Texas. We're going to find out which of the candidates are best for the people here. Hey, how you doing, sir? We're asking people who their favorite presidential candidate is. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Right now? Yes. Probably go with uh, Hillary Clinton or Rubio. Someone Hillary Clinton or Rubio. Rubio. Any particular reasons why? Uh, I want someone more towards the center. Bernie Sanders, for sure, probably. Okay, so you fill in the burn. Uh, any particular reason? Probably as a student, all of his policies about um, tuition-free college. I don't know if it'll be possible, but it works for me. Who would pay for the free tuition? Hopefully the rich people of America. How's he going to pay for all the free stuff that he's oh. suggesting he's going to give? I think, you know, he's going to try to, like, you know, obviously, you know, uh, use tax money to pay for it. Not Donald Trump. Not Donald Trump. <laughs> There's one, my why not the Donald? Um, I just think he's, like, not um, as involved in politics as he should be in order to be our president. I feel like he's too business-minded. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Any particular reason? Uh... No, I don't really follow politics, really. I just uh, just don't like Donald Trump or uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> How you doing, miss? We're asking people who their favorite presidential candidate is. Uh, Hillary. Hillary? Yeah. Any particular reason? Uh, she's a female, and everyone else, I just, uh, I don't know. Not that I'm for, I feel out of all the ones that are candidates right now, like she would be the most appropriate, but not ideal. Okay. Is there any particular policy that you like about her? Um, no, I guess just that she's a Democrat. I guess that'd be the only... Well, why not Bernie if she's a Democrat? No, because she's female, so sorry. Right. <laughs> but that's why. Anything in particular with Bernie? Well, I mean, this, uh, this clear issue of the... the one percent and the, the ability of the rich to become richer and not necessarily having a better distribution of wealth in the country i think that is a very good you know conversation to have now, i don't want to put words in your mouth but my understanding of what you're saying here is that you are supporting uh, bernie sanders and his wealth redistribution no well yes i am yeah why do you like bernie he just seems like a good guy you know he's a socialist i believe and 